We are really proceeding well on to video 4 of the workflow series and today we are going to now handle the events. Workflow event handling. That's where we are at. In the workflow event handling. So, uh, what we said basically is uh, if a workflow has been enabled, what we have just been checking is to confirm that a workflow in the workflow pages has been enabled. So, on opening your applications, and if you fire or look at your workflows, we were just confirming if it has been enabled or not. And uh, at this point, we can be able to publish this code unit the way it is. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Has it been enabled, this workflow that we have just created? Let's look at if it's enabled. Are we, uh, instead of going far away, have we done anything? Have we uh, have been able to check if it has been enabled? Because at the moment we haven't enabled. We should basically get an error. Just got a, got a technical hitch. I don't know where it came from. We should basically get a technical error. That, not a technical error. We should get an error that the workflow hasn't been enabled. My custom workflow list is here. I was wondering, it, I was not seeing any record and I left it with a little bit of some records. So let me send for approval. And I think it's already going to the error that it has not been enabled. So easy. So, so no, work, no approval workflow for this record type is enabled. So our code is working well, so far so good. And we will move into the step where now we... Uh, basically handle this event. Enabling is set up, but we need to handle the event. So in our code unit here, when you look at the base application, we do have a code unit known as workflow event handling. This one handles the events. So. If we search for vendor, for instance, one thing that is notable is we do have an approval of a vendor is requested, like this event subscription text. And uh, at this point, we are adding the events to the library for the approval being requested and approval being sent. So we create events library. As part of response handling or event handling, we will basically add our event to the library. So we will subscribe to this on add workflow events to library and add our events to the library as well. So we can start with that, adding the events to the library. This one will be automatically added when you open the workflows page. So, and you'll have a setup where you can be able to see on send workflow for approval. Did I prepare my power? Or I don't have power. It seems that uh, my, my laptop is powering off.
The power is back. The power is back. Now we should not have any hitch. So we need to handle the events. So uh, here is workflow event handling in our custom workflow management code unit. Uh, we will let's just add events to the library. And at this at this point, we subscribe to the code unit workflow event handling. So on add workflow events to library, we just need to add our own events to the library. This is where, for these ones, you need to add for every table. I don't believe there's a shortcut for this. But it's not cast on stones. You can always think through and feel if you have something to add. So we want to add our own events. Since we are subscribing, when the code is running to add events to the library, for maybe all these other documents, it will also add the events to library for our own. And we are mirroring this vendor. And so the code is that way. We are calling the uh, workflow event handling dot add events to the library. OK, so now let's a uh, lot of red lines already. So. If we look at this text that is written here, it's a label that says approval of a vendor is requested. On in our own, we'll just add a label approval of maybe uh, percent one is requested, and uh, we'll have another one. Uh, so we'll say. Workflow send and workflow cancel. Workflow cancel. And here is cancelled because sending and cancelling is following itself uh, head to head, <laughs> if there is such a word. So we can have our an, another. Uh, get workflow event description here that will return now the text. Now this one returns the text instead of the code. Get workflow event description. It will get the workflow event description and return for us now a text, it, it will take a text and it will get the record ref as well and return a text. But now for this one, it needs to have some spaces. Uh, we will not remove the spaces with the delete character. We will only have this because the value should not be a code. It's a text. and. Uh, it's simply straightforward. We will just get that particular value under record ref. So workflow send for approval event description, workflow cancel for approval event description. OK, it might seem to be a slow process, but once you get the hang of it, to create them becomes a little bit faster for everyone. So here we are adding an event. We are subscribing, and our table is a uh, the custom workflow. So we'll add a record ref for our to refer to our own table. So the record ref will basically be able to tell us, okay, to refer to this table that is now the database custom workflow header. Once we do have that, we will now call this particular code unit again, the workflow event handling. We will now add the events to the library directly to that code unit. Because it has the functionality to do that. And you can see the first thing it takes is the function name. 
And the function name for us here, we have defined it in a very generic way of get workflow code, which takes in the workflow code and the record ref. So the workflow code is uh, run workflow on send, approval code, then with a record ref. This is a label. This is what we are getting for our our code and then for the database here it's an input of the table number so with the record ref we can basically just say record ref dot number or you could use the database to reference the custom workflow header there is no harm you can either have that or this custom workflow header so here it's open let's use this custom workflow header. We cannot use generics all through. And then, uh, so here get workflow event description, and then uh, workflow uh, send text and the record ref will return for us a description that will say on send uh, workflow header for approval. And again, on this other side, we will have the same one for the cancel. So I'll just copy this. On cancel. OK. Workflow cancel. So here we also get the uh, workflow code for on cancel. This will return for us the function name. That's its purpose. On cancel. Be really careful with these functions, especially when you are mirroring or copying from one another. If you don't add these events to the library, your workflow won't work. Actually, most of the workflow code that you are creating here on the backend should be done with keenness and accuracy to make sure that you do get the right thing. Make sure you get it right at this particular point. So the purpose of the record ref is to just enable us to be able to get these workflow codes. And we are passing it. Our, we are passing in our custom workflow header and uh, we are doing, we are getting the text. After we have added our events to the library, so uh, on send, if I search for on send vendor for approval, there should be an event subscriber that will now say run workflow. It will run a workflow on send vendor for approval. And it will also run a workflow on cancel vendor for approval. And here, what we are doing, basically, we are just handling the event. We are just calling the workflow management dot handle event, and it will subscribe to anyone who will click on the on send vendor for approval. For us, we are passing in a generic, and in our case, what we'll do is subscribe now to the uh, the on send. So when we have raised this event, we will subscribe to it within the same code unit that we are in. So. Uh, subscribe and t event subscriber my time is up okay but let's just finish so the code unit that we will subscribe to is the same code unit that we are in custom because okay because our, our code unit um custom workflow come on our code unit is not detected. Custom workflow management on send workflow for approval. There's no element. We will uh, not skip anything. And it's always good practice to have the same name. But now we'll say run workflow. What will we do? Basically, this is how we usually subscribe to events. You say the action that I'll, I'll create 
on send you use the same name that was uh you're subscribing uh, that was published but you add the action to just make it easier so i will run the workflow when you send it for approval and when you hit control space you'll be able to see the variables that are there that were passed on the other side and um at this point here i will now be able to now subscribe to the event and we do need the workflow management i think i added it right here yes so instead of redefining it everywhere it's a global so we are just handling the event basically what what it's doing we are handling the event and we are getting the function name and then the variant so the function name as usual will just get the workflow code uh run workflow on send and then we pass in the record ref it will return for us the function then we will basically pass our record ref there we are got it right again i will copy i've got a bit lazy for on cancel then here we will just run workflow on cancel uh cancel okay okay so uh, okay 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 this one is not getting the workflow management for some reason i don't know something could be wrong oh okay i have seen when we are handling the event No, everything is okay. I don't know what has happened. That it's refusing. Okay, miraculously it, it has worked. So we have now done the sending, we have now done the cancellation and we have handled the event. So we will take another break for the, from this. we make sure we have handled the event now what we need to do is now to modify the statuses of our document because when you are sending uh the approval we need to make sure that this document will change the status from open to pending remember in the table we had already said that this status is not editable it is the system that will edit it it's not editable you should not allow the user to edit it manually they should send an approval for it to convert from open to pending from pending to approved and the like so at this point here what will we'll just leave it as that and in the next video we will modify the statuses of the document now from open to pending from pending to approval and we handle the rejection if the user clicks on reject it should go to rejected so that's it for this video I will see you okay in video 5 of the workflow series. I, I have started losing the count. But see you there. Stay tuned. Make sure you finish this step by step because in this we have just added three functions. So it's not a big deal. Only three function. Three functions. Yeah. Okay, see you there guys. See you on the next video. If you enjoyed this video Make sure to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.